Now let's talk about the migration of fishes and insects. Now animals like fishes and insects, they all use environmental cues for the timing and navigation of their migration. Okay, and because global warming and climate change causes this change in all their environmental cues, it will affect their phenology and the extent of their migration. Now, what is phenology? Phenology is actually the study of periodic plant and animal life cycle events. So whenever we say that an animal or plant's phenology is affected, we are uh, referring to their life cycle events. Okay, their life cycle events, their phenology is affected by climate change. Furthermore, fishes and insects are ectotherms. They are cold-blooded. So their physiology is tied very closely to environmental temperatures. And so their migration uh, patterns is very tight, uh, tied very closely to changes in environmental temperatures as well. Okay, let's watch this video to find out more about how fish migration patterns have been uh, affected due to climate change and the um, following consequences. Almost half of the world's population is reliant upon fish as a food source or as a way of making a living. But rising temperatures are changing the oceans and disrupting fish habitats. And carbon taken in from the atmosphere is making the oceans more acidic, affecting the growth and survival of many species. Many fish are being forced to adapt, migrate or die. The impact upon people who rely on fish for their sustenance and livelihoods will be profound. The ocean covers almost three quarters of the Earth's surface and acts as a huge temperature store. In spite of this, average sea level temperatures have risen three times slower than the air temperature on land. But even slight changes in temperature in certain regions can produce huge shifts in the distribution of life under the water. Many marine animals are capable of short-term adaptation by changing their behaviour or physiology. Fin and humpback whales, which can be found from the poles to the equator, have altered their migration patterns over time as a result of warmer waters. But fish that have evolved in less variable polar or tropical temperatures are less able to adapt and are sensitive to even slight changes. And those in equatorial regions are already living close to their upper heat limit. If the ocean surface temperature rises between 2 to 3 degrees Celsius, by early next century, equatorial waters could become completely uninhabitable for most shallow water fish currently living there. Those that cannot leave will face local extinction. Whether evolution can keep up with climate change in the long run is unknown. But a mass undersea migration has already been happening for decades. Around the world, both cold water and warm water fish have been heading towards the poles, searching for cooler waters. North Sea Cod have moved farther north and gone into deeper territory over the past century as a result of climate change. This has been good news for Greenland's fishermen, but not for those further south. Red mullet used to be a staple Mediterranean catch, but from the mid-1990s started to be seen off the coast of Scotland for the first time in 70 years. Plankton, primary food sources to all sorts of animals, have moved the most out of all marine life. In 2010, researchers sailing off Norway's Svalbard archipelago found tropical plankton from the equator in the nets, a possible preview of climate-induced changes. Where prey moves, predators usually follow, so entire food webs will likely be affected. But not all the changes will be harmful. On current temperature trends, the world will actually start to experience a net increase in biodiversity as species expand and thrive in new spaces. 
but by mid-21st century there will be large losses and local extinctions across tropical regions, resulting in an overall net loss. And while migration can spell survival for the fish able to make the transition, it can also adversely affect the ecosystems of the places they migrate to. Recent expansions have already been causing havoc. Invading tropical fish have been decimating kelp forests of southern Japan, which provide nutrients to local species. Melting ice between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans is opening up large-scale pathways for species invasions of the size not seen for three million years. What effects mass migrations will have upon complex ecosystems in the long term is unknown. But as the tropics experience large-scale losses of species that are not replaced, many will lose the fish they depend on to survive. So as mentioned in the video, right, as temperatures rise, fish that normally thrive in the tropics, who, who are already at their upper heat limit, are quickly migrating towards the cooler seas. Okay, they're swimming closer to the polar regions because they're in search of better oxygenated water and a much fuller source of food. Okay, as I mentioned in the previous part of the lecture, um, increasing uh, water temperatures will make it more difficult for oxygen to uh, remain dissolved in the water. So uh, warmer waters are usually less well oxygenated. Okay, so that's why fish like to find cooler waters with more uh, with better oxygenated uh, levels. Okay, so you can see from this graph here graph here that many species have migrated either southwards or northwards. Okay, and uh, more are migrating towards the North Pole. So the average shift is towards the North Pole. Now, uh, there are further impacts to the increase of sea temperatures. So because of the changing migration patterns, this changes diversity of species within a certain region. And there will be m competition with other species in the new areas that fish migrate to, and this will upset ecosystems. For non-migrating fish, uh, fish species, um, they will have problems. Um, uh, they ha will have problems maintaining their population size. Okay, and this will mean sustainability issues for us when it comes to uh, acquiring food for ourselves. Okay, and um, increasing sea temperatures are also driving many commercially important fishes into the wider seas. So again, this causes us some food insecurity issues. All right. Furthermore, uh, the increasing sea temperatures are causing changes to the timing of reproduction in these fish species okay, and their susceptibility to disease. Okay, so for instance, warmer temperatures have affected the life cycle of the salmon and increased their likelihood uh, to fall to disease. So combined with other climate in impacts, these effects are projected to lead to large decl declines of salmon populations. Now speaking of salmon populations, in some species of fish like the Chinook uh, salmon, uh, high temperatures increase the metabolic costs of their migration. Okay, Chinook salmon uh, often migrate hundreds of kilometers from their natural riverine areas to the ocean and they will return to their natal areas for spawning. Okay, and salmon prefer relatively cool water and increasing water temperatures will compromise their cardiovascular and metabolic physiology. Okay, so these fishes, they often need to rest and stop uh, to replenish their metabolic substrates during the migration. So they often need to rest in tranquil warm water to do so. But if this warm water continues to increase in temperature, this will create problems for the fish. Because as they rest and replenish their substrates, uh, this leads to, uh, you know, this will prolong their migration time and this will pr prolong their exposure to warm water which would then 
compromise their cardiovascular and metabolic physiology. Okay, so in such a state, they are also at greater risk at being preyed on by predators. So, fewer survive the journey.